So about six months ago, I decided I wanted to purchase my first Leica, and I told myself I wanted to go through all of the options. So I sat down for a long time trying to think of the M bodies and which ones had the benefits that I wanted in a camera, and then, you know, kind of weigh out the cons as well. Uh, so the cameras that I considered first was the M3, because that was actually the first Leica that I've ever shot. Shout out to my boy Ivan for letting me shoot his M3. So. Yeah, I, I love the M3. The double stroke on it was amazing. I wanted to try the M2. I also looked into the M42 and of course the Leica M6. So I was deciding between the Leica M6, the M42, the M2, and the M3. A lot of M's in that. <laughs> and I narrowed it down specifically to what I wanted in a camera. And that was I needed 35mm frame lines because, you know, at that time, Still, till this day, 35mm frame lines are probably my favorite uh, focal length to shoot. So I needed a 35 frame line and I wanted it to be the biggest in the viewfinder. So that was definitely one of the things that I wanted. So that kind of already knocked out the Leica M3. So now we have left the M42, the M6, and the M2. The M6 has a built-in meter, which I really loved, but the M6 was also around two grand. So that kind of knocked it out as well. I mean, I'm 20 years old. I am not making a full-time salary of like 50 whatever thousand that you know some of these amazing people make. So I was looking for something that was budget friendly that would fit my budget but it could also give me that 35mm frame line and the reliability of a Leica. And so I narrowed it down to the M42 and the M2. Um, and the difference between the two weren't too much but there was something just about the classic feeling of the M3 that I really enjoyed. And the closest thing to the M3 with the 35mm frame lines without putting those goggles on front was the Leica M2. And crazy story is, there was a good guy named Jake who actually sold me my first Leica and that was the Leica M2. And pretty much that's what I'm going to be talking to you guys today about, why I chose the Leica M2. I'm going to go over the camera and also do a little rundown and review and what I think about it. I mean, it's been six months since I've used this thing and I've absolutely been falling in love and I think I made the right decision with uh, what camera I wanted to get. So yeah, folks, here's the Leica M2. I'm going to drop you guys down here um, to kind of discuss the camera. Very informal video, um, but you know, I hope this will be helpful to somebody out there who is looking into getting an M2 or who just wants to learn more about the camera. All right, so here is the Leica M2. I'm gonna give you guys a quick little rundown on the camera and all of the things that are on it here. So first of all, let's talk about the lens that I have on here. The Leica M2, of course, takes the Leica M mount glass. Unfortunately, again, I don't have the budget to afford a Leica uh, M mount lens right now. So the lens that I have on here is the Voigtlander 35 millimeter color scope bar 2.5. And I really love this lens because it has the tab here, very smooth and short focus throw. Of course, it's a 35 mil focal length and being 2.5, most of the time I'm stopping it down to, you know, F8 to around F16. I don't need that extra light to get in there. So yeah, I'm pretty content and happy with this lens and I'm currently saving up for a like a Summicron 35 F2, but for now this will do. And just look at the body and how sh like small it is on the camera, so that's what I really love about it. I also have this little lens hood that's a square hood I throw on here just for fun. All right, so now moving on to the body of the camera here, you can see this M2 is in the chrome finish and like most Leica M bodies, it's made out of some type of metal here. Uh, now I know that there are the chrome M2s and there's also the black ones which are more rare, I guess you could say, but folks, I am no you know Leica expert, I don't know what these serial codes mean and I don't know what time or era this was from so if you guys have any idea just looking at the serial code where or uh, when this M2 was made I would love to know in the comment section down below but what I do know is that this M2 is the version that has the self timer and also the little rewind lever now the camera has 35 
50 and 90 millimeter frame lines and what I've noticed is that this little lever here if you look into the viewfinder which you probably can't see can pretty much adjust if you kind of push and pull here on the lever uh, the different frame lines so that's pretty cool uh, and you know I really wanted to try the 50 on the M2 but again the Magnification on here is a 0.72 and with the 35mm frame line it kind of just fills up the entire thing and with the 50 the frame line is definitely smaller within there so you know I'm not sure if I'm going to be a 50 shooter anytime soon I'm still really enjoying the 35 um, but here on the top of the camera we have Leica DBP. Ernst Lights, GmbH, Wetzlar, Germany. You got all the branding on the left side here. Uh, really, really elegant looking finish to it. Um, then you have the M2, and then you have the serial number. I have a couple little dings and dashes for normal use uh, on this camera. You also have a hot shoe as well, and then you have the shutter speed dial. Now, the shutter speed dial here is actually pretty small. I would say it's about the size of a dime if I were to compare it to something. Um, and the shutter speeds range from bulb all the way up to uh one one thousandth of a second not the fastest shutter speed in the world but you know if you are stopping your lens down one one thousandth is just enough and i think that's one of the benefits of shooting a leica especially if you're going to be learning exposure on your own you know you are limited to one one thousandth of a second so that's kind of your uh, parameters uh, you do have a flash sync here of one fiftieth of a second and the m2 is quite known to be one of the only cameras at least for leica that has an external film counting wheel and what i'm talking about is this thing right here i do have film in here so i'm going to sacrifice a quick little uh i'm going to sacrifice a shot but when you click the shutter and you advance forward you're going to just pay attention to that wheel that wheel is going to advance on its own and the cool thing about it is that you can actually reset it yourself so you can manually adjust this right here so that's cool i like it a lot of people see that as a downside to the M2, in my opinion, and it just makes it, you know, very special to me. Because the other uh, Leicas, from what I know, have a little frame counter inside a window, just like most SLRs would. Uh, here is the lever that advances your film forward. Really easy to use, really smooth. I guess you could say the SLR equivalent to this would be something like the Nikon F3. If you guys know, the F3 has 11 ball bearings, and so it's a really smooth camera to operate. Now with the M2, it's not as, I guess you could say, flush and thorough when you go through the entire throw, but it definitely feels extremely smooth. Probably one of the best throws that I've ever, ever used. Moving on to the left side of the camera here, we have the rewind lever. Um, in order to rewind, you just have to push down the rewind lever over here to r which of course indicates rewind you're going to pull up on this little piece and then you're just going to start rewinding now i still have film in there so i'm not going to rewind just yet um, an easy way to check if your film is actually feeding and loading is when you shoot a frame you're going to see those two little red dots and those red dots are going to rotate when you advance your film forward and actually folks there is my end of the roll frame so we're actually going to rewind it now on camera so this is how you rewind it here and it does take a while and I highly suggest if you've never unloaded a like like this before give yourself some time because with SLRs it's so easy to just kind of spool it back with these you're gonna have to take your time with it and you'll notice when your film is unloaded because you're gonna hear a little click and there it is all right now the film is winded back all the way and you'll feel less tension and that's it on the back of the camera you have a Okay, honestly, I have no idea what these are. I don't use them at all, so that's why there's caps on it. And then you have the back door that opens up, which I'll show you guys when I open the bottom here. I mean, you all have a little a ASA kind of cram that you can use if you want to. It, it, pretty much what I've been told is that it reminds you of what ISO you're shooting. Now, on the bottom of the camera, very simple. You have a tripod mount, um, which allows you to, you know, thread on the tripod if you ever use it. Then you have the latch release. Now... Very simple, you just flip it open, and then you twist it, and the cap comes off, all right? So that is the cap. Very, very easy to lose or drop this thing, so I always keep it in my pocket. Here's the bottom compartment of the camera right here. Again, here is that back door that flips open. So there it is, folks. Here's your roll of film. It goes onto the left side, and on the right side, you have the take-up spool. Now, if you guys can see here in the very, very center middle, I'm gonna try to get that in focus here. Um, there is a little piece that you, you feed your film into, 
and you got to load the whole contraption upside down. So if you guys want to see me make a video about how to load a Leica, definitely leave a comment down below. I'm pretty sure most of you guys would already know this. So you drop the spool back in there. You're going to feed the film across and you're just going to advance it and shoot it. Just like that. All right. So pretty simple and really easy operation. And that's, I think, one of the biggest things about Leicas. They're very simple to use, which doesn't get in the way of your shooting. Now moving on back over to the front of the camera, you have the viewfinder here. Again, it's a 0.72 magnification viewfinder on my copy at least. So, you know, very close to one and yeah, I really like it and I really uh, appreciate, you know, having a big 35mm frame line. Here you will have the, I think it's like where the light goes into uh, help aid the, the range finder patch, which is actually over here. Uh, but nonetheless, yeah, this is the Leica M2, a really, really dope body. I love this thing to death, man, and I think that's one of the things that makes this special. It's a very simple camera, um, and one of the best things about the Leica M2 now is that a lot of more folks are stepping away from the M3s and the M2 simply because of the lack of a light meter, which makes them on the market as of right now a little bit cheaper so you guys can pick up a good condition m2 or a good condition m3 for under a thousand bucks and if that's something that you're interested in right now is probably the best time to get into leica m2 or leica m3 uh, while everybody's on the wave of picking up cameras with light meters so if you don't mind shooting without a light meter and learning yourself the m2 is going to be a good bet for you the reason why i love it so much is because one it's a leica and two because you know, later down the road, 20 years from now, if I ever do have kids, which I want to, um, you know, if I see lay this every single year and get everything done, maintained, it's going to last in. I don't know about my electric SLR cameras that require battery. Um, you know, some of those might go go out and you know, who knows within the next 5, 10, 15 years where I know for sure the Leica is going to hold its ground and just be continue to be the mechanical beast that it is. So yeah folks that is the leica m2 and why i chose it and i really enjoy this camera and i love it and i also have a voigtlander best r2a that i want to show you guys later in a different video um and i want to kind of compare the two and also make a review on that camera but nonetheless you guys i hope you enjoyed the video let me know your comments and your thoughts on the leica m2 down below if you guys have one if you want one um, and some of the other Leica bodies out there. So thank you guys for watching, folks. As always, I appreciate it. Even if I shoot like a Minolta gang for life.